just wanted to show you my cup. Hey, it's Renee, and are you sure you want to buy this camera? If you are in between whether or not to buy the Canon EOS M50, please keep watching. So the camera I am using is the Canon EOS M50 Mark II. This camera has a 24.1 megapixel CMOS sensor with ISO 100 to 25,600. It has a Digic 8 image processor with auto lighting optimizer. It has improved dual pixel CMOS autofocus and eye detection autofocus. It can record up to 4K HD 24 pixels and HD 120 pixels for slow motion. It has an angled touchscreen, um, convenient for vlogging and various composition. It has a zoom lens type. So these are the specs that Canon has put out for this camera. Um, quite honestly, these are not the things that made me want to buy the camera um, because I'm not a videographer. I'm no, in no way a professional. Um, I do this for my own fun. Um, and so I can't tell you like, oh, this is how you make a movie or, or anything like that. This video is geared more towards the YouTuber or whoever you may be that doesn't have a whole lot of experience with recording videos. And this may be your very first camera. I'm going to show you how it worked out for me having little to no experience with a camera like this. So I chose to buy this camera because it was advertised as a very good vlogging camera. Originally, my channel was a vlog channel. Like I was just posting vlogs and it was fun, but it really was not sustainable for me. And I didn't think it was actually bringing me enough audience. Not like I have that much audience to begin with, but um, so I did buy this camera initially when I was vlogging a lot. Um, and now I actually only use it in studio. So I don't bring this outside of my house very often. And I can, we'll get into why that is a little later. I saw that all the other popular YouTube vloggers were using this camera and their video quality looked very good. And I was interested in something like this. One of the key features I really like about this camera is the autofocus feature. So um, as you can see now, the camera is um, focusing on my face and it kind of blurs the background a bit. I don't know there, this might be a little more obvious for you, but so it's focusing more on me and not so much on my background. Um, and I liked that. I thought that was like a very professional looking style. And that was one of the main features I wanted in the camera itself. Aside from that, I just love that it had these whole range of modes that you could pick from to help you. Because like I said, I have no real experience with cameras like this. So I need a lot more help and I don't usually want to manually put in all the specs that would take me a very long time. So with this camera, they have multiple um, modes that you can pick from. Um, for picture taking especially, it has a bunch that you can choose from whether you're inside or outside, um, low lighting, high lighting. What is that? That's not really, just very bright. Um, and just the style that you're going for with the camera. Um, but it, then for video recording, which is what I most often am working with, it also has an auto focus setting where it adjusts the brightness for you. It adjusts the face tracking, the eye tracking, um, and it does do some work with the lighting. Um, so I most often use this depending on what my lighting situation is. Um, and then of course, for all of these features, you can always um, put in your own manual settings to help with that. So, uh, this camera, like I mentioned, can record in 4k HD, um, and then, you know, all the way down from 1080 on, but what they don't mention. And I only recently found out is that for 4k HD, when you're actually recording, then it crops so much of the video out. So here's the video, right? Um, just normal i am it's not set to 4k it's uh it's at uh 1080 hd it's full hd and it looks pretty good right so with 4k it crops it down to about this 
it's not a huge deal but it definitely can shrink the size of the space you're working with and if you're going for something that looks um a little bigger or like a, you're just trying to give that illusion of a grander space 4k is not gonna hit it on this camera specifically I will also mention, which kills me the most, I'm like, I never use it because of this. It does not have the auto focus on 4K. So you can't do the blur um, effect on 4K. It will just have everything solid. Not a big deal if you don't mind going in like afterwards and just blurring it manually in whatever uh, video editing software or picture editing software you're using but personally I don't feel like doing all that I don't really know how I could figure it out but I don't want to so I'd rather have the camera do the work for me um, something that was also mentioned to me which doesn't make this a con necessary for this camera th depending on what you're using it for is that with 4k in most cases, people are watching these videos on their phones or on their tablets and they're not very large screens. And with 4K, you're not going to notice a huge difference between 1080 and 4K on a small device. Uh, another thing about this camera is it has the viewfinder. That's just like the little part where you can put your eye in and get in close with the face. Um, so you can look and find whatever your focus is, whatever your uh, subject is in the viewfinder, as well as the touchscreen I mentioned. So this touchscreen um, is fully movable. So you don't have to just keep it locked on the back of the camera where you're looking. You can actually flip it over to the front, um, which is how I have it right now. So you can actually see yourself in the video um, and just keep an eye on like, are you being focused? Is the lighting the way you need? In case anything were to auto adjust, you will be able to see it immediately. So I, this is like a huge thing for me, especially if you're like vlogging, you're going to want to see what's going on and even if you're like me now and just recording in your studio you're gonna want to see what's going on it just helps to know like am i still in frame did i move too much um is the thing that i'm trying to show you guys in frame it's super helpful and like i said it is touch screen so yeah, i can go right on here and touch the screen and adjust any settings as i go if I, there's something in there i don't like or want to adjust so this is a huge pro for this camera. I love this about it um, and like a must have. As far as how it works in low light. So as you can see, I'm going for a little bit of a warmer like low lights setting here. Um, and uh, normally, like I said, I do use the autofocus setting. So the auto movie mode is what I normally would shoot in. But in this case, because I have my studio um, lights off and I just have um, my ring lights on and like some filler lights in the back, I actually went in and manually adjusted the settings a bit so I could get a crisper image. With a little research and a little playing around, you can get this camera to perform very well in like a lower lighting setting so i was able to adjust it it only took me literally like a minute and i was able to get the settings just the way i wanted and get a crisper video uh resolution there so as far as how it performs in low light i think it does very well as long as you know how to light the area around you so i would not just turn off all the lights you know put one ring light on my face and call it a day you're probably going to look like a ghost oh my gosh can you see my breath I don't know if you can see that, but it's literally for rigid in my studio. If you guys haven't seen my video about how I set the studio up, you won't know this, but I am, <laughs> this is technically a crawl space and it's not fully insulated. I don't think it's insulated at all, actually. So it gets cold and I turned the heater off so you guys wouldn't have to suffer through the sound, but I'm freezing and I can see my breath. So we're gonna we're gonna keep going let's keep going okay next thing is mic quality so with this camera the mic quality is not bad it doesn't sound like you're recording through a potato or anything it does sound pretty good um personally i like to use my own mic which is currently sticking into my video i don't often use the natural mic in the camera but i will switch that off for a second so you can actually hear me through the camera and see the quality now i know that these cameras do usually come in sets with like you can get this youtube kind of kit the vlogging kit um which comes with like this additional mic uh 
accessory that you can plug into the camera and it's supposed to enhance the mic quality but I have researched it and I found that it did not make a big difference at all and it was not worth the extra money you're paying for those um, accessories if you can get them used sure if someone just gave them to you okay but you would actually be okay just recording through the mics camera I don't think you would have an issue um, but again if you're like me and you're recording in your home studio you'll probably have a mic on anyway so it it's just your preference at that point. Let's talk about travel. So with this camera, again, if you're taking this for vlogging, you're probably going to be traveling a lot with it. Even if it's just to the park down the street, you know, you're gonna be moving with this. I, when I was vlogging, I honestly did not take this camera out too much. I've had this camera for about a year and a half now. And in that time, I really haven't taken it out of the house that much. This isn't to say I'm not using it because I'm definitely using it, guys. But um, the big thing about these cameras is that they're very expensive. And I'm not saying they're expensive for a camera. This is actually considered a budget camera, but they're expensive just in general, like money, like it is a lot of money. So the idea of taking the chance of dropping this camera or hurting this camera in any way by taking it out all the time shatters me, terrifies me. And I cannot handle the idea of like wasting that much money because with these cameras, they are very sensitive and dropping them can shatter the lens um, and can mess up the body. And then the repairs can be kind of crazy too. So I just don't take it out very much. I keep her protected. When I do take her out, I do have an entire Canon bag that I bought. I just got it used off of my Kari save your money guys if your goal is to use this for vlogging i found that even other youtubers have mentioned that they don't really use this camera that much outside of the house for the vlogging personally i actually just use my phone if i really need to record on the go most phones like iphone or galaxy or i don't know google pixel maybe can handle like video recording i know personally on my galaxy phone where is my phone? Usually phones like this have uh, a bunch of lenses, as you can see, that allow for um, really high quality video taking that you could get away with literally just using your phone for a majority. Even what I'm doing right now could be accomplished on my phone. It has the auto focus. Um, it has a built in mic like um it has different settings and it works pretty well in low light i haven't tried like this setup on my phone with to see how crisp i could get the quality but i've had a lot of success with it in the past and i have used it like i said this is my go-to travel aside from my gopro i usually use my phone because it's quick it's easy and i usually already have it out and i don't really need any fancy equipment to record on that speaking of like vlogging and recording the recording time for this camera is 30 minutes it says 29 minutes 59 seconds on the camera so every 30 minutes basically you would have to tell it to start recording again if you're not done recording um it will just stop like it will not beep it won't like have a message on the screen it it just stops like you just have you have to keep that in mind now like I said, the screen, the touch screen does flip over. So like I can see it right now and it does have the time clearly marked at the top and it's always rolling it. So you can see how long you have left. Um, and typically it hasn't been an issue. Initially, I thought it'd be really annoying, but it hasn't been a problem. I usually don't record for 30 minutes straight. And if I do, I, I usually take a break in between somewhere to adjust or, um, my set surroundings or something so it actually is fine and this is typically where you will find on most cameras like this that they will cut off uh, at about 30 minutes i know that it on the sony i forget which one <laughs> on, i will i will say which one it is right here but on the sony camera which is another budget camera around this price range it does allow for continuous um, recording, but it does take the risk of overheating. So this, with this, you know, 30 minute um, time limit, it does reduce battery usage because it's not um, 
like non-stop recording so if you finish and forget to turn it off at least you it'll turn itself off basically it does have a uh, sleep mode as well where it will the screen shuts off and everything when it's not being in use also it, re it prevents it from overheating so you can get more use out of it so i do appreciate that from the camera in the end i thought i hated it but i guess i don't okay so let's get into the big picture here how much does this thing cost so right now on amazon this camera retails for 699 dollars um, this does include the 45 millimeter lens. That's actually what I am using right now. And basically one battery and the strap. And that pretty much is it. That's a lot of money. I don't know about y'all, but that's a lot of money, especially if you're like me and you're still in college. Mm. For a camera like this, this is actually, like I said, considered a budget camera. These cameras can easily go for a thousand plus. So that is why this price range at the five, 600 mark, 700 mark is considered affordable for the camera and what you're getting. Um, and these cameras do last a while. Like I said, I've had this camera for a year and a half and it's fine. I will also mention that I specifically got my camera from Canon refurbished, meaning that they took a camera that was already used and like fixed it up brand new and cleaned it up real nice and that's what i'm using and it looks great i've had no issues so i highly suggest you check out um a refurbished version if you are trying to save a couple of dollars with a camera like this because i got it straight from canon i was able to get a one-year warranty with that as well which is you know i just have a lot of trust for like the maker of the product to refurbish their own product that they made and then also offer me a warranty in case it did funk out for some reason um, so if you are going to get it refurbished, yeah, get it from Canon or someone you really, really, really trust who can offer you a warranty because I wouldn't risk this much money on just any business, even if they are really refutable, like really do your research with that. Now, keeping in mind the phone that this phone retails for around $899. This is the Samsung S22, um, just the, the, uh, basic model not the extra stuff and it has a really great camera really good video recording it does have autofocus and it also has a wide lens so pick your battles i know this is more expensive but you're already probably going to have something like this whereas this is the camera is an additional cost on top of the phone that you already own so you really have to ask yourself like what do i need this camera for and why am i willing to spend this much money on it if i already have something that might be able to do it what i need from it you just have to ask yourself i'm not telling you not to buy this camera i'm saying why why do you want it for me i personally told myself like i had to consistently record like and post uh before i could buy the camera so i waited i think like four or five months before i even bought the camera because i wanted to see am i actually posting and i did um so like really look at yourself like are am i going to use this consistently what am i going to use it for and see if you can justify the cost from that my conclusion overall is this camera even worth it okay personally i actually really like the camera <laughs> um if it's like your phone isn't really up to par and it's not giving you what you want and you just want to bring your channel to the next level then yeah go ahead get this camera see if you can get it refurbished but i think it's a good investment as long as you feel really confident in that decision if not and you just feel like oh i'm a youtuber and i need this camera in order to record i'm gonna just stop you and say don't do it use your phone you don't need it if that is the case and if you're saying that you want this camera to go out and vlog with people do it you can take this out of the house i'm just terrified i'm a baby you don't have to go off of what i'm saying but i will reiterate if you drop the camera it's not cheap to fix but that's pretty much everything i wanted to cover today i hope that helped you in your decision um, of whether to buy this camera or not but yes thank you so much for clicking on this video i'll see you next time bye i don't know why i like this cup so much it's like ice cream with bunny ears i don't know it's like i'm upset